the mentality we talked about. Uh, but the squat rack is something near and dear to me. And probably the most important thing I think about when I uh, get ready to squat is the shoes. You have to have good shoes. I mean, would you consider ice skating without ice skates? <laughs> Granted, I make these shoes, yeah, okay. I, I finally designed my own pair, okay. But you know what? They're just like Shemansky's back in the old days. I copied what he did, okay. And it, it's not a pretty boot. It's green, with incredible hope is green, Mopar green, okay. Uh, this is, you know, but uh, I like green. Green motivates me. Without good shoes, you're setting yourself up for failure. Because if, if you move and have lateral sway, and if you don't have good support, you're already putting yourself in a compromising position and you probably uh, will have difficulty getting to where you want to go and probably get injured. Besides the high shoes, I believe in high socks as well. And this is a little mental thing I do. I, I never wear high socks, except maybe black socks, I think, colors on them and stuff. But uh, when I put the high socks on, it's a mental cue for me. It's squat day, okay? I mean, you have to do little things like this to where it cues you in to get in that mode. You don't just walk up to the squat rack and go, okay, I'm gonna do 50 reps of 405. You have to prepare, prep to that moment. It's like you don't just see a girl on the street and say, hey, let's get married. Right? You court her, you have a courting period. You look at her, she looks at you, you kiss, you friends, you hold hands. Same thing here. There's a courting process that you have to go through. And there's a setup. Uh, but the high socks right away puts me in that mode of, I can tell you why I do the high socks. I used to wear shorts in the 70s when I was a teenager. And the high socks made me feel shorter. If I was shorter, I had less of a distance to go. So it made that <laughs> mentally. <laughs> I like that. Never told you about that. Well, sure. <laughs> I'm telling the secrets now. <laughs> but the shoes are very important. I, of course, uh, the heel, and I, I went through many different kinds of shoes. I, Finally, with the help of my wife, child, we find the right shoemaker, a guy from Louis Vuitton that uh, got the leather and the wood. I was had a big argument about the wood. So I'm like, no, I think rubber is better, the more cushion. But the wood, the special wood from a certain country, it, it gives you a lot of acceleration. I can drive and move faster with the bar. Nowadays, I, I finish my rep, I'm like, wow, the rep's over, you can move faster. You have to. Keep that in mind. This, this most weightlifters use wood. There's a reason they use wood. Wood soles it gives you more acceleration, more power. Uh, power is force times distance over time. Uh, we don't need to get into all that, <laughs> okay? But uh, it does give you more power. I wish I would have had these thoughts when I was in my 20s and 30s. <laughs> but I used uh, Adidas squat shoes. You know, the first thing that Norbert Chemansky said to me when I was a little kid, he goes, "I was 15 years old in the gym." <laughs> Let's go get some shoes, kid, and come back and talk to you. <laughs> Don't even stay in the gym, get out of here, get some shoes. I'm like, yes, sir. So I went to the I went to the sporting goods store and like, believe it or not, I found a pair of squat shoes. <laughs> it, was, it was like a miracle. They, what size? Do you have size nine? Yes, they're the only pair we have, kid. Nine? Okay, we'll take it. You know, everything I had, sixty, seventy-five dollars back in the seventy. It's like the fortune. You know what I mean? But the shoes are important. Stability is important. It's like, would you drive your truck or your car with less, with cheap, skinny tires? <laughs> Did you consider on a, a Sean putting on your truck cheap wheels and cheap tires? No way! <laughs> a woman, you know the importance of good heels, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's everything! Right. <laughs> and that's, that's what I take to here. I mean, everything. You've got to have right shoes. Uh, in this case, it's about support. It's not necessarily about the you know, fashion. But then again, we can get into that. That's another discussion. They just look like race cars, right? It's not yeah. Um, when people don't like the green, they like the red or the whatever colors. But the green, for me, like I said before, incredible Hulk, Mopar green. I'm a big you know, Mopar fan. You know, what does what does Mopar represent? Horsepower, you know, <laughs> fast, and torque, and all that stuff. You know, you ever seen weightlifters do this? Probably none of you've seen weightlifters. Body in the gym. Wait, it was just, when I was a kid, they always did this. All right, kids, go. Why do they do that? It, it stimulates the nerve, it puts vibrations through your body, it allows you to warm up and accept, and get ready for what you're about to do. You don't just do it to do it. There's a reason, there's methodology for stomping your feet. Bulls do it. You know, yeah. Bullfighting. 
you know, there's a reason they're getting ready to attack that guy with the red velvet thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is, these are all things we forgot about. And we've invented these vibration machines and electronic muscle stimulation machines and, you know, everything's calculated, electronic, but old-fashioned sets and reps. The, 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 the basic tools of our industry are the barbells and the dumbbells. It never goes away. There's a lot of reasons behind that. Yeah. Good side. I don't want to spend too much time. I could spend, I've talked about the squat for three or four hours at a time. I'm going to try to get this done quickly and just give you a taste of what I'm talking about as I have been so we can get the work to talk about you doing it, not just me doing it. If you notice, this bar is slightly bent. It's bent on purpose. I bent it on purpose. I actually put four or five on I bounced it on the bench press so it became bent. I want that. Uh, I squatted when I was a teenager, all the bars were bent because they were on the squat rack for a lot of weight and they, they bent, so they were bent and I was used to that. But you know what? It didn't roll down my back. It, it felt comfortable. And so I, I recreated the 1970s by bending my own bar. I don't want the bar to roll, then you have to get into this. And squatting, really, it's about using your quadriceps as the prime mover. Notice I'm not, they teach, what they teach you in, in nowadays is put your butt out, forget about that. Forget about everything you ever learned. It's about squatting straight down, straight up. Straight down, straight up. It's not about the back, not about the butt, it's about using the quadriceps as the prime move. I'm bypassing stretching. Stretching is important. We'll get into that later uh, or another time. The stretching is very important. I just wouldn't walk in. I would go through some passive stretching before you go to the squat rack. It prepares the body and the mind. Again, it's about to happen. But in terms of the squat, uh, the, the bent bar, nowadays, especially with shoulders that are compromised uh, over the years of pounding my shoulder, my flexibility is not as good. The bent bar works really good. Uh, not too bent, it's a little bit bent. But I, originally, even when I had tremendous youthful flexibility back in my teenage years, the bent bar was a perfect idea. It was by mistake, but it worked perfectly. Um, just to give you an idea. This is simply, a, it's a simple movement, but people take it too lightly. They believe you can learn it in a day. It takes years to learn it properly. It's not about this. It's about straight up and down. Pooh. Watch me from the side. None of this. Not a lot of lateral sway. Like a piston in a cylinder. Pooh. Two. Pooh. Pooh. What about foot distance, Mr. Uh, good question. Some structural differences must be assessed with everyone. Okay? Uh, you don't want to go too wide. Uh, the, the, the longer, taller person may have to go a little wider. Yeah. That's, I think there's a structural variation with every individual. Not everybody can adopt the same movement style that I do or somebody else does. There's some structural variation, and inherent anatomical differences, of course. But uh, what I do know is you just can't squat like the majority of people in the gym nowadays. There's a problem there. The butt, the butt winking, which I didn't even know how to do. Butt winking, <laughs> you know, I try, I can't even invent it. But there's too much stress on the spine. The spine, squatting is getting a bad rap. It's, it's popular. In the old days, when, when I first came into Gold's Gym in the 70s, they used to store benches underneath the squat rack. Nobody could use it. When I started squatting heavily for reps, everyone said, don't do that, don't do that. I'm like, okay, kept doing it. This new was supposed to do it. But, uh, I think most people have distorted the movement. They're using too much butt, they're leaning over, and as a result, they're really training the lower back, they're training the buttocks, their hamstrings to some degree. It's easier on the knees to squat uh, like that, but it's not as effective over time, uh, if I may say so. Um, a lot of what it takes is interpersonal structural instruction to go one day at a time. It takes I think we worked for a couple of years before we really adopted that. Um, 
But in any event, the pure squat, where the quadriceps are the prime mover. The most noticeable thing to, for me about modern day individuals is there's a lack of ankle flexibility. If there's a lack of ankle flexibility, it's gonna limit you. If there's a lack of hip flexibility, which it's almost across the board, it's amazing. How do we get that? Well, I got both those problems. <laughs> I think you know, it, it takes, you can, you can get more mobile, you can achieve more uh, flexibility, you can get more flexible by uh, stretching uh, in a variety of ways, which uh, I can talk about. Uh, and I'll sort of skip over that right now, we can get into that. But uh, doing it correctly will push you into the right position. The shoes, having a heel on the shoes, you know, there's a heel on my shoe. Flat footed, will not work. You need a slight heel. I've found people who have a limited degree of ankle flexibility need a little heel, a little loft forward. I do, and I'm, I can squat flat footed, but I, I found the little bit of loft on the heel is very important. If a person lacks in ankle flexibility, almost always a higher heel would be my one recommendation without getting into a lot of esoteric data. Um, slowly getting lower in the movement, not just jumping into it. Over time, over time practicing the movement. Because most people, the way they walk, the way they were taught to walk and get things is about this. Nobody really squats like this. Like years ago when I was taught to lift a box, it was like, use your legs. Now it's like everybody uses their back. You'll see that. In any event, it's a progression, something we can definitely talk about over time. Nutrition plays a role in that. Food's not as nutrient dense as it used to be. But primarily, I think we forgot about the importance of the dumbbells and the barbells. You use too many machines over time. And I think machines is limited flexibility and core ability. Most guys I work with lack ability to really keep the core tight. They can't do reps because they can really loosen up. There's a lot of considerations for it. In any event, I'd like to have everybody squat today. As much as I can talk about this forever and ever and ever, uh, I'd like you to squat. I'm gonna look at it, critique it, and talk about it with you briefly. Everyone will, we have a small enough group where everybody can do that. I've done it with hundreds as well, but it takes a long time. Okay, but keep in mind, the high bar squat is what I'm looking for. A high bar, my hat on. Never had long hair in my life. But, you know, I figured at age 62, I should probably try it <laughs> before I die here. If you notice, the bar is high on the back. It's not real low. The bar is high on the back. You have to keep the bar high on your back. Uh, I would about shorter width, about shorter width based upon your structure. And I would go straight down. It's not the first thing you do should not be this. If you start going like this, stop. It's not that, it's this. It's not that, it's this. Straight down, straight up. Straight down, straight up. No, yes. <laughs> straight down, straight up. Like movement, straight up and straight down. He's not. He's not. He's not doing his butt talks or lower back as the prime mover. It's all about quadriceps. Nice. Very nice. Relax. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Do it your way. Yeah. 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 Not bad. Not bad. Get breath. Get breath. Go slow. Easy down. Using your back, look straight down. Wider stance, a little wider stance. Yeah, now try that. Uh -huh. Better. I like that depth for you right now. Uh, it's all about quadriceps. Good. It's easier for you to use a uh, lower back and see that. You know, be careful here. You're starting to bend down. You're starting to go forward. Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. There's a low bar again. Nice power movement. Nice. I'll go with that. Very nice. 
put work into that movement, I can tell. You come oh, here. <laughs> yeah, we can yeah. see it right away. It's, it's reeks of training, preparation, and thought. Sense that. Powerlifting is like a different sport. You know, you're, you're combining a really clean, pure technique with powerlifting. Reminds me of Fred Hatfield. Fred Hatfield passed away recently. But Fred and I was just squatting. He had the ability to great power, tremendous power. Much like yourself. He had a ability. I would always go real pure Olympic. Fred would put his mm -hmm. hips in there a little bit, thrust. You, know, you can lift more weight sideways than you can straight up and down. That's why a power force. Power of his methodology is to move this way and push weight this way. You can push more weight sideways than you can straight up and down. Right. Your movement, right, very straight up and down, a little bit that way, which is understandably sport power thing. You're doing it's a meticulous move. I like it. I like it much. Wow. I have, I'm just going to do it that way. I, I, <laughs> I tried with Fred to do it that way. And we, we got to 700 pounds, right? <laughs> <laughs> It takes a long time to change a motor path. It really does. Two years to make to get this technique. So I, I, I admire I, I work with guys and it takes them two years sometimes to finally get it. The average 20 year old, if they're really right there, if they're reasonably healthy, they can usually do it in a couple of sessions maybe. Because they never did anything else before. They go, okay, that way, this way, and they do it. But the 30 year old, two years, it takes a 20 year old you know, maybe one or two workouts. And they, they sort of sway and come back to it. The, 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 the really working on the technique, the correct movement, the pure movement is very important. But I love what you do. Great stuff. Good, thank you. Good teacher. Not bad. Quads. Yeah, look at the quads. Yes. Not bad. Not bad for those those shoes too. Flat foot common <laughs> shoes. You're doing a good job. Very very flexible for a young man. Nice. I like it.